Hi, welcome to this tutorial on basic queries with the Apollo client. Let's start by moving into the exercise 2 directory. Again, let's make sure we install all the dependencies. And let's try starting it. Okay, so nothing too exciting going on. Let's have a go at making a query. I'll open this directory up in my editor. Open up source, components, and Pokedex. So right now, Pokedex is just a bog standard React component. So first thing to do, let's go ahead and import Apollo client. Now what we want to do is kind of personalize this a bit. So that instead of saying, hey, there are a certain number of Pokemons in your Pokedex, it says, hey, and then the name of the trainer, and then the number of Pokemons in the Pokedex. So we're going to need to make a query for this. Let's start by having a look at the way our data is structured right now. So I can go back into the tutorial and click the GraphQL server button. And if we click on the GraphQL panel and then the docs, we see that we have either a query or a mutation available. So we're going to need to do a query. And we can see we have all these different options. So in this case, I'm going to use the trainer field and query. So let's have a look at what trainers are available. We can do this by having a look. Further up, we have all Pokemon, all files, all users, and all trainers. So let's use all trainers to see what trainers are available. If I run this, I see that I have one trainer available with the name Julian. This makes sense because when I signed in via GitHub, my name was automatically used to create one trainer that then owns all the Pokemon. So let's go ahead and use this to construct our own query in our app. So I'm going to close this window and grab this query that's been defined for us. Let's paste it here for now. So the way this works is Apollo will go ahead and execute this query and will come back and pass it into our React component as props. This is a really nice decoupling. It means that our React component doesn't have to know where the data is coming from. We might already have it, we might be making a request for it. Either way, it gets processed in the exact same way. So this is done by taking our React component, wrapping it in an Apollo component, which is like a higher order component, so that once Apollo has finished making the request, it'll pass it into the React component. This means you can then access it via props. So the first thing we're going to have to do is remove the export default. So we can just have class up here. And what we do with this is we can export Pokedex with data, which is a combination of trainer query, this query that's been defined over here, and Pokedex. So what should happen is this query is executed, the result is passed in as props into our component, and our component ideally renders it. And we export this whole thing right at the bottom. Now the last thing we're missing is actually rendering the name out. We've got it in as props, but we want to see it display. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy the class to save time. Here we can see that we've enforced the prop types with data, loading, error, and trainer. Loading and error are things that Apollo will fill out for us if anything goes wrong, or while it's fetching the data. Putting these prop types in just means that if something goes wrong or something else is passed in, we get alerted as opposed to having to debug for ages to try and figure out what's happened. So inside the render method, if it's loading, we'll just display loading. If there's an error, we'll log the error. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and render hey, this.props.trainer.name, which should be Julian in my case. Ideally, in your case, it'll be your name, comma, there are zero Pokemons in your Pokedex. Now that we've done this, let's go ahead and run it. Okay, so there's a little mistake here. This prop type is repeated twice, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, remove this and paste in the corrected version. And let's go ahead and try running it again. It looks like it's compiled successfully, so let's see what it looks like. You can see that it's loading right now. And we can see that we've got, hey Julian, there are zero Pokemons in your Pokedex, which is what we wanted. So that's great. What we've done is we've defined our first query and we've seen how we can take a React component, wrap that into Apollo's higher order component, and through the props, render the result onto the page. Brilliant. 
Hope this was helpful. In the next video, we're going to cover more advanced querying. See you then.